Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs once again. So we have now second mock interview with uh, a two plus years of experience guy. Uh, his name is Piyush and uh, we connected through mail and through YouTube and he's I think one of my uh, subscriber also and looks really good. The profile looks really good with two years experience. He has done a lot of amazing work in terms of testing, in terms of automation. So uh, Piyush now, uh, most welcome for this mock interview. I'm pretty much sure that, okay, your preparation is good. So now you can uh, turn your webcam on, Piyush. Mm, hey, hi, Naveen. Thank you, guys. And yeah, I'm just a bit nervous. Uh, let's see how it goes. Don't be nervous, just relax. And then this is just a mock. Um, I'm sure that, okay, this will help you. And uh, yeah. according to whatever the knowledge that I have on the basis of that, I'll definitely try to ask some really good questions and uh, and definitely will share my feedback so that you can uh, work on those things and pretty much show that whatever you're looking for the new job or something, uh, definitely you will crack and really, you know, get the good offers. Cool. So Piyush, uh, I have your resume with me and uh, where exactly you're working and what is your overall experience you have and what exactly you're doing in terms of testing and automation. Yeah, so I work in an order based company and that's just a service based company and I work there as a test automation engineer and um, mm -hmm. Uh, I've, I've been deployed into multiple projects and uh, so first one was Java mm -hmm. project that was Java with Selenium. Other one was uh, I was uh, actually working as a manual tester in that project. That was my second project uh, that was mm -hmm. basically based on React to JS. So I had just to check uh, the manual spec of mm -hmm. those uh, that application. And the third project mm -hmm. currently I'm working in is uh, a project uh, based on web driver IU and uh, basically JavaScript and web DIU. Okay. So that's it. Oh, good, nice. So, uh, what's your preference language? You prefer Java or JavaScript, or any specific reason you were using WebDriver IE? Uh, uh, okay, so uh, there was there's no such a specific reason. Uh, just uh, you know, just to hands on mm -hmm. to new technologies and uh, the trending, which are mm -hmm. you know trending in these this like uh, markets. So that was the main concern, and uh, no such uh, reason behind that just following the latest mm -hmm. trend so that you can say okay and my preference so did you uh, propose... would be uh, would be java yeah okay so did you uh, did you propose this thing in your company that okay let's try with the web driver io in your current company or the web driver io they were already using it uh, yeah actually they were already using it i was new to that project uh, it's been around 8 months uh, since now and um, so they were mm -hmm. like my company was using that already before i entered okay. into that project okay good and okay, it's yeah. been i suppose uh, one or two years mm -hmm. uh, since we are using web diu so currently in your company what is your role you are like totally into automation or you're taking care of other functional testing stuff also yeah so basically my role is uh, uh, to you know automate those test scenario which are currently in our backlog uh, we pick the tickets uh, mm -hmm. either it is manual automation or you know we just need to automate it uh, from the go and uh, other than that uh, uh, about my rules uh, i uh, generally we trigger smoke builds based on the deployment mm -hmm. we have and uh, this is all about it okay so tell me one thing like let's say you're joining a new company right and uh, the job is let's say i would say 70 80 percent into automation work i'm looking for an automation guy and uh, what your preference from the first day you will start writing the automation code so or you will understand the product first so what is your preference no uh, actually naveen if you see it doesn't follow uh, from the you know from day when you're expecting hmm. the automation to you know um, like you cannot write test cases without knowing the application that is the basic funda mm -hmm. and first you need to have the manual knowledge of it you need to read the documentation or maybe you need to uh, have some kt sessions uh, with your seniors mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. after analyzing the you know application manually then you can go ahead with the automation mm -hmm. you need to find which are the mm -hmm. test cases which are stable enough for automation and uh, not just directly jumping onto it uh, first uh, uh, like, uh, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, understanding the basic uh, application, your web application, and then after going for the automation part. So, so uh, that, will uh, you be happy that, okay, if I say that, okay, okay, next three, four months, we really don't have uh, a bandwidth to maintain the automation and to write the new automation because we have back-to-back -back releases and you have to keep executing the test cases manually and, and then and working in the specific to the domain and then 
right now we don't have any bandwidth for automation so in that case uh, what will you do that uh, yeah uh, basically i am a tester so that defines me it's not like i'm you know i'm just uh, basically meant for the automation of the test cases and uh, we mm -hmm. have uh, manual uh, you know we we need to do, do sometimes manual testing as well and first of mm -hmm. all as i already mentioned we need to check the uh, you know application manually then i've also written uh, the test cases for you know for uh, my second project that i was mentioning uh, you know before mm -hmm. so i had written the test cases in jira and uh, we may have mm -hmm. those with our requirement traceability metrics like uh, how the you know the industrial standards follow so the mm -hmm. things is have like things have to go in hand you know manual expects need to be covered first and then after automation so that's mm -hmm. completely okay if uh, uh, you know if a new company says that uh, will be deploying you as a manual engineer so that's no issues but yeah okay you know, there on i'll be getting into automation and i would love to automate that exactly you know? Yeah, I think uh, I think that, that's a good thing that I think there's nothing like automation or manual testing. I think it should there's be nothing a like automation. Correct. Ultimately, we are testers. Yeah. Good. Okay, so tell me one thing. Let's see. What is your criteria to pick the test case to be automated? What are the best candidate for automation? It's not like everything we can automate. So let's see if I have a 500 uh, test cases are written and then I really want to automate them. So which test cases you will be picking for the automation okay so considering uh, all those factors that you mentioned okay so first uh, we will look on to the test cases which cover the major functionality which are part of uh, you can say our smoke testing uh, right and so mm -hmm. we are going to categorize our test cases on the basis of the testing like uh, if they are based on smoke testing or if they are going to be included into our regression suite so that would help mm -hmm. us a lot. Other than that, we need to check uh, uh, if the test cases are stable enough to automate, right? If there is uh, test mm -hmm. data inconsistency issue, or uh, you know, uh, if the, um, like the application if it is not stable, so there is no mean of automating that, correct? And uh, mm -hmm. other than that, we need to also have a, a conversation with our team, uh, collaboration. We need to have mm -hmm. collaboration with other testers as well, and uh, also we need to rank the test cases based upon their priorities. Uh, mm -hmm. which uh, which test cases are like uh, which covers up the major functionalities and what uh, you know uh, what are so let's see like, your manual testing team saying that and after the discussion you feel that okay out of 500 everything can be automated or we say that okay yeah according to me everything should be automated but you are an automation guy and what what is your criteria to pick the okay these are the best candidate for the automation i should pick them because manual tester or your uh, product manager they can say that okay yeah, everything should be automated or maybe 90% right. coverage I need, but you will start from somewhere. So give me some base points that, okay, yeah, these are the important things. On the basis of that, I'll pick my test cases for automation. All right. Um, considering these factors, if you say, uh, I will pick, uh, let's suppose uh, if all the 500 uh, test cases have the same priority. That's what you mean, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the same priority we have differently. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, based on different priority, but yeah, they are essential, right, for the automation. Like they need to be automated. Okay, so if I see, uh, I would first automate the test cases which are, you know, um, easy and uh, well, they can be well maintained and then do not require much efforts. Other than that, uh, we need to check, uh, we need to check if the test cases, uh, if there is, you know, some test data issue or uh, some inconsistency in, the, in those test cases, which require further dependency from other, you know, uh, uh, other application. So I suppose I would neglect those test cases first and uh, we'll look on to the major, uh, uh, we'll look on to the test cases which will cover the major functionalities. Okay. And any dependent okay. test cases I would exclude definitely mm -hmm. because, you know, they can be covered up in later mm -hmm. sprints, but uh, not, uh, you know, not in the current sprint. So let's see, you have picked, let's see, out of 500, 300 test cases should be automated. You figure it out after your uh, calculation, after your research after your investigation so what will be the first thing you will pick right let's say after 300 uh, you will do everything within the sprint or how will you communicate with your product manager or with your uh, scrum master that okay yeah we will discuss with the team that this is what i have to automate so how will you suggest them that okay yeah we can consider automation in the current task as well uh, okay so uh, regarding this i will think of it as a you know as a new customer how when it lands into our application so first uh, if you if you see uh, you know uh, there's a login page uh, that we need to automate first right and then the user is going to navigate to the dashboard page 
so based on the uh, you know based on the essential pages that uh, a user is going to visit uh, frequently mm -hmm. so that's how i will pick the automation automation test cases regarding the, the pages so how I will you convince pick. how will you convince the team how will you convince your product manager that okay product manager says okay let's forget about automation you can just concentrate on your feature testing complete it we have to release the feature but how will you convince them that okay no automation should also be part of the uh, current sprint it should be created as a task in the zira in the current sprint how will you convince that uh, i would tell them the advantage like uh, you know we can have these automation tests run uh, you know on every uh, on daily basis and uh, whenever the developer is providing us a new build so we can trigger those smoke test cases so we will uh, find the mm -hmm. you know uh, if even if there is a, an unfortunate case of uh, you know uh, like a bug is being introduced into that uh, application so mm -hmm. we'll get get to know it in the early stages of that application so that's how i would uh, you know ask my manager about it okay okay good so let's see uh, i have to design one simple test okay either in automation or a manual test what should be the best thing that we will be writing okay including the steps so tell me the basic template of a test case either in automation or in a or in a normal typical function or manual test that you are writing it what are the different things you will include in your test where you're writing it okay so uh, if i'm considering a simple test scenario we should have a test case id uh, and mm -hmm. we should uh, we we should write a positive test case as well as a negative test case for the same scenario and uh, mm -hmm. considering uh, about uh, you know if that uh, test data requires some inputs from the user so then we have to mm -hmm. uh, you know pass the test data in form of uh, like different test data uh, we can divide the test data into ranges or we can have the boundary value analysis mm -hmm. of the test data and uh, mm -hmm. uh, like these are the approaches i would follow for a test case for a new test case that need to be automated or it need to be performed manually mm -hmm. And the same test case, let's say I'm writing in in terms of automation. Let's say I'm using test ng. So what mm -hmm. is the most important thing that you will be writing over there? Let's see, I just, for example, let's say I'll, I'm giving you one scenario. I have to enter the username password, click on login button, and I'm landing on the home page. What are the different things you will write in your automation test? Okay, okay, so for this thing, uh, if we are, if I'm using test ng, first of all, uh, I will check if the, if you know, uh, if the user is able to log in uh, with uh, uh, his valid username and password credentials, and um, mm -hmm. if uh, you know, if he successfully logged on to the home page, and I can verify if the title mm -hmm. displayed is correct, right? Uh, the login page title and the home page mm -hmm. title to which he is going to navigate. And uh, other than that, we can also have. Um, other test cases like uh, if the user is entering invalid credentials like invalid username so let's invalid talk password. only okay so let's talk about only positive test case in automation you have entered your username password correct and the title is coming let's say title is coming correct so on the basis of that you will certify that okay log the user has logged in successfully or you will check something uh, else let's see okay. you have logged in but it's saying welcome navin instead of yeah, welcome definitely. Oh, yeah definitely but title is correct because you know uh, whenever a user whenever a new user logs into the system so there is an uh, uh, you can say the username displayed on that uh, uh, you can say uh, on the home page or dashboard page so i also need to assert that whether it is uh, you know displaying correct or not and uh, other than that yeah a title mm -hmm. you can say and if you can uh, hover onto the profile and if the profile is being displayed correct or not because you know if you say like uh, mm -hmm. if i'm navigating if i you know if i log into that application and if it is showing if it is showing me welcome naveen or something else like it's not the username that uh, my name is so i uh, actually need to verify it mm -hmm. and uh, so like that's how it would follow not only that uh, not only okay. the uh, page title but also the username and you know the correct uh, uh, user mm -hmm. detail should be displayed to me okay good yeah exactly because title could be anything title will be always remain same obviously title would be but same but the okay, username yeah that's different yeah okay good so uh how comfortable you are in selenium i'm not asking on the scale of one to ten no one can uh, judge you on the basis of that but you tell me that okay yeah 
uh, this is what uh, I'm really good in Selenium and this is the area in Selenium where I'm lacking. I need to improve. Uh, okay, so if I say, okay, so it's been around one year since I learned Selenium and uh, I'm good. Uh, uh, basically, I followed, uh, like I cannot tell you in which areas I'm good at. Uh, mm -hmm. If you just put up some questions, then I, I would say okay. like, better better you verify it okay sure no problem so tell me like basic selenium you know basic selenium architecture how exactly selenium web driver works how exactly it's going to interact with the with the browser what all different entities will participate when we talk about okay. web driver architecture yeah so actually uh, so the basic basically the selenium works uh, okay so we have a selenium client jar Right, and uh, this client jar communicate with our uh, whatever the code has been written by the user. So this code is converted into a JSON wire mm -hmm. protocol, and this JSON wire protocol is transmitted to our uh, you know uh, our respective browser browser driver that is maybe the Chrome driver or I don't know it Firefox driver or you know mm -hmm. Safari driver. So and that driver communicates with our real browser that is present in our system or in the remote system. So on the basis of HTTP uh, request and response protocol, both these uh, internal driver and my real browser mm -hmm. uh, and my real browser communicates with each other. And then they transform me back the response mm -hmm. in the JSON wire protocol, which uh, my Selenium client jar converts back into the Java or whatever the programming language I'm using. And uh, so with respect to the JSON wire protocol uh, in Selenium web driver architecture, do you know there's a new? Yeah, Selenium 4. Yeah, Correct. Uh, mm -hmm. So the the case here is actually they have removed the uh, you know participation of JSON wire protocol over there. So the whole communication is going to mm -hmm. be uh, uh, in WC3 standardization, I suppose. And uh, that's how what it's is going W3C? to fall in. Can you... Word web what is W3C wire... standard? WC3 protocol. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say it is a standard for you know it is a protocol that allows uh, um, systems to communicate between them. Like I'm, I'm not sure, but uh, I've mm -hmm. just heard of it. Okay. What web, web okay, fine. okay. No issues. So this Chrome driver dot exe file that you are using it, that is a binary file or Firefox dot exe file, that is Geeko driver that you are using it. Uh, whose responsibility it is? It's provided by the Selenium core team, or it's provided by the vendor. The browser. No, actually, it it it's it needs to be downloaded externally. Uh, actually, the browser team supports this thing, and uh, uh, either we can use uh, you know a library which is Web Driver Manager uh, developed by Boni Gracia, or uh, we can you know just download it and uh, uh, you know just uh, mention our path in the Selenium script. So, so whose responsibility it is? Who who is developing that .exe file? Who's responsibility? Uh, it's a Selenium code team responsibility or browser no, no, responsibility? It's, uh, yeah, it's browser responsibility. Every, uh, you know, mm -hmm. respective browsers uh, are, you know, developing their driver versions to communicate for communication. Mm -hmm. So I suppose it's totally, you know, browser's responsibility to update uh, a new versions of Chrome driver or, you know, Geeko driver. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. So let's say I'll give you an example uh, for one scenario. Let's say you're using driver API and then uh, you are doing something and then finally you close the browser with the help of driver.close right all right and then again you are writing after driver.close you are trying to print driver.get title will it print the title or what what will happen actually it won't print the title it is going to throw an exception that is a driver not found exception uh, i suppose mm -hmm. So it's not going to print because you know the, our session ID has been expired. If I you know if I write driver dot close, so okay. it, it is going if to I print write driver dot if I write driver dot quit, and then I'll if, try to print the title. Yeah, if you write uh, the things are going to be same in both the cases. Uh, uh, Selenium is going to throw an exception for both the cases, I suppose. And if if you are writing driver dot quit, I suppose the session ID is null in that case, mm -hmm. and so so invalid session exception, I suppose, uh, Selenium would throw. Okay. <clears throat> okay. What do you understand by if someone is asking you, tell me about HTML DOM. What is HTML DOM? Why? What is? I'm not talking about only full form, but tell me what is HTML DOM? How exactly browser works with respect to HTML DOM? 
okay so basically dom is uh, you can say structure uh, how the web element are uh, you know laid in a, in a web page right it defines mm -hmm. the structure uh, like uh, if an element is present in a web page so it is linked with particular other web elements as well and uh, uh, it basically it's it's a skeleton of all the web elements that are being shown into our web application or a particular mm -hmm. web page and uh, every okay. uh, yeah so is it an xml document what kind of format of the html dom what is the format of html dom yeah that's an xml xml document i would say okay so tell me one thing like which one will be loaded first let's say you are hitting a server amazon.com so dom will be loaded first and the and the browser and the element will be displayed first on the web page all right so first the dom will be loaded thereafter the element mm -hmm. could be loaded on the web pages whenever i'm trying to so, hit a new button or is it is uh, you know redirecting mm -hmm. me to another page so first the dom will be loaded and later on the elements so uh, what mechanism browser will be using it's in case of chrome the the entire dom which is loaded on the page and then uh, then the <clears throat> element has to be displayed on the on the web page so in between that browser will be using some mechanism to do that or how exactly it will happen do you have any idea about it i suppose whenever an element is loaded into a dom it uh, it uh, i suppose there is a unique idea of every element uh, uh, whenever it is loaded into the dom so the browser i suppose it checks for that id and that's how uh, we get uh, you know if that id is refreshed or it is uh, you know stale um, or is it it is null i'm not talking about i'm not talking about selenium i'm talking about just the browser a dom is loaded and then on what basis let's see the 100 elements are there in the dom right 100 nodes are there in your xml html dom is it compulsory that okay browser will parse the entire dom and all the 100 elements will be displayed on the on the web page uh i'm sorry actually I'm, i don't have such you know clear understanding okay no it. issues okay okay no worries what is javascript executor in selenium Okay, so JavaScript executor it it basically works on the uh, or the JavaScript element that we are you know that we are seeing in our DOM, and it is you know uh, we have um, like uh, many commands uh, in JavaScript executor like we can highlight element, we can click the element using mm -hmm. JavaScript, and we can uh, we can hover, we can double click, uh, and we can drag and drop, and uh, most of the functionality which cannot be you know uh, done by Selenium. It is just an extended mm -hmm. support that uh, mm -hmm. I would say that is included in our, you know, for our. So tell me, uh, information. I have a button. Let's see, I have a button or a link, and uh, I can do a normal click also. I can use the web element click, right? Correct. Driver dot find element and dot click, and uh, I can use JavaScript click also. Which one you prefer? Uh, if uh, you know if the button is working with the selenium click web driver you know driver dot click then definitely we are mm -hmm. going to uh, you know go ahead with that same um, mm -hmm. approach uh, even if it isn't you know if there are certain parameter like uh, there are timing or sync issues in selenium so we can go ahead mm -hmm. with the javascript executor but um, our first priority would be uh, using the selenium apis okay but in which case you will be using javascript executor dot for dot click Okay, so let's something suppose, in which case you will be using it. Mm -hmm. uh, suppose if the yeah, there are multiple cases. Let's suppose if the element uh, is not clickable, right? If uh, mm -hmm. you know it is uh, if the click is being intercepted by other uh, you know uh, other uh, element or something, or if it is being mm -hmm. uh, you know if it is not visible on the web page, because uh, you know mm -hmm. so going to throw up an error like that uh, element is not visible on the web page. If it is even mm -hmm. if it is present on the DOM, but uh, it is not uh, you know available on our screen. So Java, like uh, so, in these cases, we can use JavaScript executor. Okay, okay, good. Okay, so let's see. I have a, you know a one drop down is available. All right. Right. And uh, I don't want to use. So I'll do one thing. Let me just uh, share my. Okay, share one. I'm sharing one. Uh, can you check in the chat? I'm sharing one link with you. Yeah, I can see this. Okay, good. 
so i have one drop down so let's see this is the drop down but there is this drop down is having no select class right let's see this is, right. could be any having some div and then number of uh, uh, list is available or maybe some different other options are available in this particular list okay Okay. How will you automate? Just simple. Give me the basic. Uh, I'm not expecting the exact code. Just tell me that okay, you have to select a specific value. So let's see, there is a country drop down, and you have to select India from that particular drop down. But this is not select class. So how will you automate okay. that? Okay, so what I can write, write is yeah, can I can write here. driver driver dot click. If it is not a select class. Uh, Definitely, it is going to get a click of it, and then it is going to load me the, you know, load me all the, uh, what you can say, options of the drop down, and then I can basically hover to that uh, option, and I will write driver dot find element, and I can, you know, I can pass that x path of the particular. Uh, if you're saying it's India, mm -hmm. so I can do it like this, uh, India. If it is, <laughs> if it is a span inside a span, so I will write like this. So okay so let's see there are 500 countries are there in the drop down so how we mouse over on that particular india because it's you have to keep scrolling down right so don't you think that will be not a good solution uh sorry i didn't get it uh i suppose so let's say there is a drop down yeah let's say there is a drop down and 500 countries are there and india is coming on 400th index right okay so you have to okay. keep you know, scroll down in the drop down itself to reach over okay. there, India. Or will this line number seven that you have written, or it will select that? No, definitely we need some other, uh, you know, function <laughs> for scrolling first, and then it will. Yeah, uh, there are topic of writing this line because uh, it is going to select if it is visible on the, you know, on my screen. Mm -hmm. It is not going to scroll down. Uh, so in that case, we can use JavaScript executor. But uh, to be honest, I do not mm -hmm. know. Can we like, use a? Uh, can we use list over here instead of? Uh, can we collect all the options? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. We can. List yeah, we can. Yeah, we can mm -hmm. have a list of. Uh, you can say drop down equals to new array list. List. Uh, it has to be. You know. We have to pass the generic. It has to be a generic function, and uh, later on we can, you know, uh, uh, drp dot get by index or you know by whatever the value we have, or we can get. Yeah, but how will you collect all the? How will you collect? How will you create a list? Which method will return the list of element? Which method? Is... Method, right? Driver dot find elements. Will return right. the list so, of web elements. Yeah. So can you create a list over here first with the driver dot find elements? Oh, okay. Okay. Just wait. Driver. And uh, here I need to you know pass my mm -hmm. locators x path or CSS or name or ID or tag whatever. And uh, so this find elements is going to return me a list of web elements that I am going to capture over here. So and a better. So let's you are right. okay. Uh, one second. So tell me the X path. What type of X path you will be creating? As I told you that okay, we have a div is the main parent and li is all the child elements are available in this particular div. That this would be my X path, I suppose. Okay, so you got your list over here, and after that, what will you write? Correct. No, so I like what uh, what I need to perform now. I have my list, and then I you have to select India. Can, yeah, then I can get text, I suppose. But how will you put a get text on which? Because this is a list. On list, how will you perform a get text? Um. You can write a for loop. Yeah, I can write a for loop for int mm -hmm. i equals to zero. I is less than list dot size or whatever it is. Drp dot size size mm -hmm. i plus plus. Then uh, I need to write drp dot get this mm -hmm. i dot uh, mm -hmm. if it is equal to uh, dot get text. Correct. 
-hmm. If it is equals mm -hmm. to India, then I'm going to capture that locator, and then I I uh, I need to you know uh, perform the click action on that. Perform the click action. Oh, so let's see the condition is matched over here. This is a line number 13. Can you write if over there? This is your if condition, right? Yeah, sure. That's an if condition. So let's say you have found India. Then after that, and how will you click? Then I suppose we can create a web element, a new web element that is India. And uh, um, if I'm having get text, I will get the India. So why do you need to create a web element? You don't need to create a web element in your list. All the web elements are already there. No, I suppose uh, I'm going to store it into a different web element and then I'll be performing the click. Mm -hmm. So that's why I wrote it. Okay, uh, okay. driver, if it will be able to get I, it is going to be, I will have it drp dot get I, then I can perform the click India dot click. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then after that, after a click, let's say I just want to select India from there. No, so after, after clicking, that, I suppose. Let's so want to have after, let's see, after... So let's see, uh, there are hundred elements are there, and India is available on fifty position. I equal All to right. fifty, and All it right. clicked on it. Then again, it will go to I equal to fifty one. So it will keep checking your loop. So I don't okay, want to yeah. do anything after. Uh, no, I can, I can use a keyword here, break. Uh, break after clicking on it or before clicking on it? Uh, if drp dot get text i, this one is if I get it, uh, then I'll, I'm going to store it into my India web element. And uh, okay, break, I need to write it below this line. Right? Yes, this one. Yes okay okay good okay let me just uh, remove this sorry actually i was confused you know i was not getting no worries what you just wanted. take your time and then understand the question first and then try to solve it okay Correct. okay so i'm giving you one more question let's see i'm writing a string s is equal to let's see piyush right correct just reverse it Okay, I need to reverse it. Yeah. For int I push to zero I is less than s dot. Okay, first tell me before writing this for loop. Uh, first tell me like can I write s dot reverse directly? Yeah, definitely we can use Java methods, built-in methods, but uh, no, no, no. Uh, that's a string. Uh, we can we can mm -hmm. write uh, if it is a a string buffer. We cannot write s dot reverse because that method is not present in string class. Why it is not present? Why it is present in a string buffer? Because a string is immutable. It points to a single object. It does not create a new object. It's just a object literal, right? And a string buffer, mm -hmm. it adds a new object. Uh, uh, it uh, creates a new object from the string pool. So that's how. Mm -hmm. And uh, so and yeah, basically that's the main reason behind that. Okay. Okay. Now you can write your for loop. Okay, I plus plus. So this is this has to be s dot length minus one. Mm -hmm. I less than zero. I minus minus. Then I can have a new string b equals to null. Then I can b dot care uh, b. Uh, a dot here at i b plus a dot care at i and then i'm going to print my reverse string what is b what is a here sorry uh, oh, this is s okay i can yeah. still see a are you sure it will work? Is there, is there any? Okay, just let let me double check. For mm -hmm. int i equals to s dot length. S dot length minus one. I is greater than zero. Greater than equals to zero. B 
equals to b plus minus. I suppose this would work now. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Because uh, the string starts with zero index. Yeah. Okay. Good. So let me uh, remove this thing. Right. So let's see. I'll give you one more more scenario. Uh, let's see. I have a checkbox. So let's see this. Uh, how to create a checkbox? Let's see. This is a checkbox in a particular web table. And then I have written Piyush over here. Then I'm returning, let's say your company name. Let's say your company name is IBM. And then I'm writing a phone number double nine double nine. Then again we have a checkbox. Then I'm writing, let's see Naveen over here. <coughs> company name is uh, let's say CTS. I'm writing my phone number over here like that. Right. So like this, we have different rows over here. So what do I have to do that for Naveen or let's see for Piyush, I have to select the checkbox. Right, but okay. this position of Naveen right now it's coming on let's see third position. You can see the number three. It could be on any position. It's position is totally dynamic. It's dynamic. So okay. how will you handle this? How will you select the checkbox for this guy? Okay, so I need to inspect uh, the web element for the same, and based upon the text uh, text, I would say, let's suppose it is mm -hmm. inside a span or div. Uh, you say, and then mm -hmm. I need to write, uh, you know, whatever the person name is contains. Uh, mm -hmm. Add the text. Contains. Add the text. Sorry, text. Or only text. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whatever your name is, and then I have to hit that. Uh, I, I, if uh, you know, if the checkbox is parent of uh, this locator, right? This particular locator. No, they are not I parent. To... Let's see. Okay, let me tell you. Uh, this is the first column. This is the second column, and CTS is the third column, and this is the fourth column, like that. Okay, this is the current situation, and they both are not the pa uh, parent child. They both are siblings. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's yeah. thanks. Uh, this is this okay, so I will write preceding sibling. Mm -hmm. I suppose this this would work for a particular mm -hmm. like uh, if I throw Naveen here, then it is going to check this checkbox. It, what it, what uh, how how will you jump from Naveen to checkbox? Right now, you Naveen is no, let's no. say dev right so you have to jump from dev to td first if you say i need to jump uh, okay uh, let me clear let me have a clear understanding this uh this thing is mm -hmm. inside a td right this is like this is yeah, what so can you can you just can you just draw uh you know uh, html structure of okay. it yeah so that's what i'm saying let's see this is the input for the checkbox right. piyush is with a span the name is a span that's it. All right. And these spans are available. They're individual TD, individual columns. And the checkbox is having another TD that is another column. This is the HTML structure. Okay, so this is going to be input. And uh, sorry, this is going to be a span. Mm -hmm. The name is inside a span, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So this is uh, this will highlight my or like the username, right? And mm -hmm. to move, uh, okay, so to move to the TD element. Yeah, how will you move there? They are, they are, they are siblings, right? TD to TD is sibling, but first we have to move from span to TD. From span to TD, and there's a parent-child relationship. Yeah, span is available okay. under TD. So I can write this thing, or I can write simply this parent. Mm -hmm. I suppose then uh, this will move my locator to the TD, right? TD or whatever the parent is. Uh, I'm sorry. Parent right? is TD only. Parent is yeah, TD parent, only. Yeah, whatever the parent is. And then, uh, okay, so I've moved on to TD and then I need to, this is input, right? The checkboxes uh, uh, tag names are input. Yeah, checkbox tag name is input. That is again available inside a TD. Checkboxes tag, tag name is input. That is all right this is this is parent and all right then this is the first td then i need to move to the second one so this will this will click on my second td and then i need to this is input is it correct mm -hmm. no what is parent 2 
with parent you're passing the index i'm not looking for the exact index i'm just looking for the concept that what will be the mechanism what will be the flow you will be using in your html dom so the flow would be first of all i will be checking uh, the name right mm -hmm. the name locator i'll be getting that name Perfect. locator then i need okay. to uh, then i need to traverse uh, to the parent element because it's a td i suppose right yes so how will you go there yeah and uh, yeah by by you know by writing this by parent yeah, or so by yeah the parent keyword is fine after parent down. yeah after parent keyword i need to move to its following sibling right of following or preceding that uh, mm -hmm. following uh, because you know uh, inside that td that is uh, inside that td is the input checkbox right okay that's fine no issues that's uh, just concentrate uh, okay maybe later on you can check it later that how can be i'm not looking for the syntax but it's you know okay maybe you can check it i know you know it but i'm looking yeah, for maybe the I'm... Hmm. yeah okay, like no uh... No, uh, okay, if I write the sentence, then I'm uh, uh, sorry. If I write that I was, you know, going to navigate to my parent element, right? Till that part mm -hmm. uh, was I correct? Yeah, till that part was you correct? Okay. Okay. After, anyway, that's not an issue. Let's uh, proceed further. That's okay. Perfectly fine. Sure. So let's say I'm giving you one more, uh, one more uh, thing over here. So uh, tell me, in respect to page object model design pattern, right? You are designing a uh, let's see any kind of framework where you're using the page object model design pattern tell me what are the uh, things you will be writing in your page classes and what are the different things you will be writing in your test class all right so while so following the page object mention over here yeah cool so first of all uh, inside the page page class i would be writing my by locators mm -hmm. right and mm -hmm then i'll be writing the page actions that i'm going to perform in in these locators right mm -hmm. so this is supposed to be added into my page class and in my test class i'm going to create object create uh, create object of page classes suppose uh, you know mm -hmm. we have a dashboard page we create object of the dashboard page and then we call okay. the method of call mm -hmm methods of the dashboard page class from these objects mm -hmm. okay then will you write then, your assertion in your page class or in your test class uh yeah assertions i'm going to write in my yeah my assertions are you know are very important over here assertions i'm going to write in my test class only we, so we if i ask you in my page yeah if I ask you, I'll move my assertion to the page class. Is there any problem with that? Actually, uh, actually, that's a debatable concept. But uh, uh, I have, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've gone through the uh, documentation of the test ng, and uh, they say that uh, we should not write assertions in our page class. Better we should focus it onto our test layer only, because you know that's a because it serves the purpose of testing and uh, testing without assertions, you know that's uh, that's mm -hmm. not acceptable so we should follow a practice of writing the assertion in our test class itself so it's written in test ng documentation or you have seen somewhere else uh i've seen it uh, in some documentation i did not remember right now but uh, yeah i've read mm -hmm. it uh, on the internet and uh, okay okay yeah so tell me this uh, by, by locator let's see if i'm using java which locator, uh, which identifier or uh, access modifier you will be using for your by locators? You will be using okay. public locators, private locators, what kind of locators it will be? Uh, actually, we can use any type of locator, but if you see the process, mm -hmm. if, uh, if uh, uh, you know, if we want to have a concept of encapsulation over here, so we should always use private, mm -hmm. private like we should make our locators as private. And then we mm -hmm. should have a getter and setter method to call them directly. So I, I would follow the private locators approach rather than following the public public one. So uh, let's see you are creating one private by locator. Let's see at line number four, you are writing some private locator. Let's see I'm writing it for you. So will you create getter setter or your page action will be public? Sorry, I didn't get it. 
So let's say line number four, you have created private locators. Yeah, correct. Will you create getter and setter or your page actions that you're writing, those methods will be public? Yeah, those methods are going to be public. And uh, if there is a case like we, if we want to use getter setter directly, right? Like for mm -hmm. calling in our test classes, uh, we can use, then we can use that concept. But basically we use these private locator inside our public method, which are defined in mm -hmm. our page classes. And that's the best best approach to follow okay so what is encapsulation encapsulation is it compulsory to write getter and setter or without getter and setter also we can achieve the encapsulation uh you know basically encapsulation is a binding of uh, you know member data member mm -hmm. variables with the methods and uh, getter mm -hmm. and setter they provide us you know the concept of encapsulation it's just that we can also use like i already mentioned we can also use uh, public method over there there's no such a uh, mm -hmm. hard and fast rule we need to use only getter and setters for you know accessing our locators mm -hmm. okay and uh, you know with the okay. uh, yes yeah. okay can you tell me a uh, design or maybe some okay but obviously we cannot design something over here so just tell me the web driver complete api documentation what are the different classes are there web driver is the interface is a class can you tell me some uh, uh, different components or different classes interface the linking between different classes and interface all right so uh okay let me revise right okay so we have an interface which is known as search context right mm -hmm. then comes web driver uh, web driver which is also an interface and that extends that uh, this uh, search mm -hmm. context interface right and other than that mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, okay so uh, search context extends uh, web driver Okay. Tell and, me the uh, tell me the method name also. Uh, tell me the method name also. Maybe one or two methods which are available in these interfaces. If you if you remember that. Yeah. Find element and find elements are available in search mm -hmm. context. I mean they are not available. They are just uh, we have just a method uh, uh, definition, right? Because uh, they are going mm -hmm. to be extended in our remote uh, web driver class or my Chrome class or you know Firefox. And uh, Firefox. Mm -hmm. uh, Five, uh, your web driver, you can say driver dot get, uh, driver dot close or quit. And since this is also mm -hmm. an interface uh, which extends search context, and uh, so the methods are still not defined over here in this interface. And then comes mm -hmm. the remote web driver, right? Remote mm -hmm. web driver is a class which implement web driver. And um, mm -hmm. uh, later on comes uh, Chromium driver. Right. This is also mm -hmm. class, uh, separate class for Chrome driver. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I mean, it's a, you know, Chromium is a parent of Chrome driver. And uh, mm -hmm. then comes Firefox uh, driver class and Safari driver class, Microsoft Edge class. So okay. that's how the architect follows. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. So uh, one last question with respect to, let's see, the infrastructure setup. Are you using, uh, have you used any uh, grid or Selenium grid on Dockerized containers or something like this? Uh, actually, actually, my company isn't following the concept of Docker, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, we are using the concept of, you know, virtualization still. And uh, okay. I, I haven't set up Selenium, Selenium grid on, you know, uh, these VMs, but uh, with respect to my company, they are using, you know, concept of, virtualization yet okay sure okay no worries i can see in your resume that okay you have worked with the api also and then um, api are yeah. you using postman or uh, i mean you're doing just like hitting the apis and getting the response or you're writing yeah, some automation um, also for that no that was part of my personal project actually and uh, like it's not mm -hmm. into automation but uh, we are uh, actually i have used it in my previous project that was my first project so I've used API mm -hmm. concept over there. So we were hitting, uh, you know, request through Postman tool, mm -hmm. and that was limited only to, you know, manual aspect, not the automation. Okay, perfect. No issues. Uh, just tell me the uh, what are different uh, authorization methods are available or authorization concepts are available. It means what type of different authentication we can perform. 
okay when we do right. the apa test yeah so the, there are no mainly the various type of authorization that is basic authorization uh, you need to pass your mm -hmm. username and password uh, so you know the application would verify if it is a correct user or not then comes cookie based authorization then we have uh, uh, OAuth mm -hmm. mechanism as well for authorization, which is very trending. And uh, I suppose Twitter, PayPal, they all use uh, OAuth mechanism. And we also have they something use, called... Uh, they use OAuth 1.0 or 2.0. Do you know the difference between these two? Yeah, OAuth, uh, uh, Twitter, I suppose, use OAuth 1.0. And uh, Jira mm -hmm. is using OAuth 2.0. Uh, 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 I... I seriously don't know the difference, but I suppose there are, you know, some more mm -hmm. uh, security fields which are added in OAuth 2.0 as compared to OAuth 1.0. You know, like okay, I, I, what I, else I, we have uh, other right. than that? So we, uh, yeah, we have cookie based. Mm -hmm. We have uh, we have something called as digest uh, uh, digest authorization. I suppose not not that much idea. And yeah, we also have. Uh, uh, JSON web tokens, JWT, mm -hmm. because, by the, because here we need to, uh, you know, we here we need to download, a, sorry, uh, execute a file for getting the token, which need to be passed into our header, authorization header. So these are a couple of mechanisms okay. that I have read about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is cookie-based authentication? Are you sure that we have something like this, cookie-based authentication? Uh, cookie based authentication i suppose uh, uh, i suppose we have some, some cookie which need to be passed into the header of the request that mm -hmm. we are going to perform and uh, that's how you know the server uh, verifies that cookies yeah, like if that user is correct or not like uh, not uh, not much idea about it but uh, i've just uh, mm -hmm. you know had a look of it okay no worries can you tell me like uh, you must be using in your system in your company that uh, what is the difference between monolithic system and the microservices architecture do you know what is the, ex the basic difference between these two architecture uh, i suppose uh, i actually have not much idea about it but i suppose monolithic are not dependent on you know uh, uh, other applications and microservices are like uh, i suppose they are dependent mm -hmm. on you know other application like uh, if we we are having uh, uh, you know we have different type of uh, modules in our in our single project uh, like uh, you know search page module order management system mm -hmm. so these are connected to each other you know one functionality is going to ap ap uh, affect the other and uh, i suppose these these are like microservices and monolithic are I, they are isolated from you know uh, other applications so what will we you prefer what is your preference which one is a better architecture monolithic or microservices uh, in case of maintenance uh, if you see mono, monolithic are easy to maintain because you know uh, mm -hmm. if uh, you know one part is damaging the application then we can just you know uh, cover 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 it up but uh, if the microservices considering about microservices maintenance uh, they are you know i suppose they are not uh, that easy to maintain because if something breaks down mm -hmm. the entire application is going to affect uh, you know the customer uh, responses so are you sure? like uh, let's see uh, i have amazon app and then only let's see my order history is not working that is a small microservice which is not working it's not going to shut down the entire application but in uh, but in monolithic if something is gone down the entire system is down yeah that depends upon the use case how the you know customer is using that application if suppose i'm uh, let's suppose uh, uh, if we take any stand alone application like paint or calculator right if if uh, mm -hmm. you know if uh, there's some issue then definitely the uh, whole application is not going to work but uh, if we consider yeah you gave a good example like if we are using amazon and suppose let's let's suppose the order history is not coming but then definitely mm -hmm. we can you know uh, add a new product to our basket or you know we can like we can, yeah, search, we can other still search we can still log in we can okay. still do a lot of things on amazon it doesn't mean that okay entire system is down just because okay. of one small service right yeah that okay. depends Anyways. upon yeah mm -hmm. the customer requirements i suppose both of the system are good in their ways 
ओके ओके सो माइक्रो सर्विस एंड एपीआई बोथ आर सेम व्हाट यू थिंक माइक्रो सर्विसेज एंड एपीआई आई सपोज Uh, no, I suppose uh, API is something like which uh, which provides communication between the two application. Either it is on, you know, uh, web or uh, like like if it requires the use of internet or not. And microservices, uh, I suppose I have not much idea about it, but I suppose they are not same because mm-hmm. maybe they require the use of internet. So that's how okay. they are different. Okay, what is API gateway? You must have heard about it. it's a very simple terminology generally we use it what are the different things you will configure in api gateway mm, api gateway no i have not much idea about it okay no worries that's perfectly fine okay okay good so uh, you are saying that okay you are using zira tool and um, you know for your uh, project management so are you writing a test cases in zira also no i do not write the test cases uh, mm-hmm. in my current project i don't write but yeah, i have written it in my previous project in current project okay. i just pick up the test uh, just stories and try to you know automate them based on the properties okay but uh, let's say someone a new person is joining so how will you make sure that okay this person is having some ba- fair knowledge about the application so because you don't have any test cases written no documentation about the test cases no uh, definitely uh, mm-hmm. if you see uh, like uh, i'm Yeah, I can. We can write test cases, right? Uh, suppose let's suppose our senior person left the company, and he is responsible mm-hmm. for. Like, he is a manual guy, and he is responsible for you know writing the test cases, whether it is uh, like you know meeting the requirement of our uh, you know uh, of our um, business analyst or P or not. He like mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, and definitely so we are going to cover it up. Like I know, but uh, mm-hmm. you know that's basically I. Like that's not my daily job, I would say. Okay. Okay. Sure. No problem. Okay. Tell me one thing. Like, what is BDD? I'm okay, not talking BDD about Cucumber. Is... I'm talking about BDD. Yeah, BDD is behavior driven development. Uh, you write the test cases based on the behavior that uh, that has been provided you by, uh, you know, the business analysts or the developer or even the tester itself. right uh, so how the application behave and uh, so that's how we are going to write the test cases for it so that's basically so is only about the test cases no it's not about the test cases uh, like how the application is going to uh, you know behave when uh, mm-hmm. i would say like uh, bdd is all about the behavior of the application and then we write down the test cases for it the particular test cases right we have like we you know we have different keywords like given when then and based on these uh, mm-hmm. conditions we write the test cases for that particular application so if the uh, if an application is following bdd then it has to go through mm-hmm. all those you know what test cases whatever has been written in our test stories or you know what has been so provided so do you think uh, so do you think that saying the test cases is a wrong maybe the wrong keyword we are using for that what do you call about can we say features we write some feature files or maybe the features with the help of given when then yeah correct we write yeah right like uh, these uh, we write these tests and you in form of given when them and these tests and you are kept into feature file okay But who writes that whose responsibility to define these features okay uh, so in my previous project there we had some, we had stories and the developer mm-hmm. used to write that and he used to write that in uh, you know uh, our uh, what do we say that st uh, uh, that was test case uh, uh, i'm not getting that actual word there was something uh, yeah access uh, yeah acceptance criteria so he used to write those you know uh, in our project so why uh, you guys are writing acceptance criteria you are not interacting with the business right or dev is interacting with the business it's a pure responsibility to write it to write the acceptance criteria and define the user story and later on you guys can add up some points over there yeah so actually the scenario was uh, our scrum master was our senior dev and like he was mm-hmm. he was he was both he was a scrum master and he was a dev person so he used to write that uh, mm-hmm. you know for us and uh, we just copy paste those scenario and uh, we add it in our feature uh, right 
but again mr scrum master is not the po right he is not a product yeah, manager or product owner he is not no he is not mm-hmm. a product manager like he was you know he was uh, assigned he was working as a po as well so according to you according to you forget about your current project let's see so what do you think about it who should write the feature file who should write the acceptance criteria who will define uh, the a user story definitely the po should write it because he, uh, the po's they take the requirement from the customers and based on the customer feedback mm-hmm. or whatever the new requirement that they want to hear out from the customers so i suppose po would be an ideal candidate for that okay and do you know what's the difference be between discussed between you know dev and the tester uh like the whole team uh, okay. a, a proper collaboration has to be maintained and uh, that's what a bdd mm-hmm. follows okay tell me like do you know what is the difference between bdd and tdd and attd have you ever heard about these three terms uh i i heard about tdd i followed tdd from you know last uh, eight or nine months uh mm-hmm. attd i suppose uh, i suppose we first tested that application and then we write test cases for it i'm not sure about attd but yeah, bdd i've already mm-hmm. told you and uh, tdd is just a test uh, driven development we write test cases and we simply try to you know automate uh, sorry i mean we uh, we write the test cases and then mm-hmm. we uh, continue the testing of that application either manually or through by automation but attd i suppose uh, we uh, we test that, sure that is TDD? first sorry are you sure that is tdd uh, tdd is uh, tdd is, i would say we uh, we write the test cases and then we test that application uh, i suppose that's what mm-hmm. tdd is and uh, attd is uh, uh, we test that application first and then we write the test cases like uh, maybe, maybe this is this is the basic difference but i'm not sure but i am okay. pretty confident about tdd that uh, we write the test cases first and based on those test cases we verify it manually or mm-hmm. via automation so you saying that okay you write a test cases first it means the development is already done no it's not like that uh, if a particular feature or functionality has been done so we can write uh, mm-hmm. you know and if it is stable enough not stable enough uh, stable uh, stability will be checked for automation only Uh, and if it is good like if it has been developed then we can write the test cases and then we can continue with the testing mm-hmm. okay okay fine okay so uh, one last question from my side piyush and then uh, i think uh, we are done so uh, do you have any exposure with respect to ci cd pipeline or jenkins or any devops activity are you doing currently in your current project or in your previous companies uh okay so not currently uh, but yeah actually i i participate in you know um, deployment call mm-hmm. we have a separate devops team for that and uh, mm-hmm. but i have not been a part of this activity but yeah i know a bit about it like you know cicd the jenkins and jenkins mm-hmm. pipeline i have a knowledge on them but uh, you know uh, practically i haven't, i haven't performed the deployment mm-hmm. from my own in my company okay 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 no issues okay fine so tell me uh, one thing that is uh... okay you say that okay you have all these things so tell me one thing that uh, in your resume also you have uh, you know return testing and then certain level of automation you are doing some uh, self practice also on your api and everything what is your target in next 5 years where exactly you want to see yourself in next 5 years Uh, just don't give me the typical uh, answer what exactly in your criteria let's say next 3 4 years so step by step i'll try to achieve these milestone and and next 4 5 years plan yeah so the thing is actually i want to learn what's uh, what's trending in the market i need i mm-hmm. I, sh- i i just don't want to you know stick to a particular process that uh, that is uh, you know being followed from years in a you know in a particular company and uh, i try to learn new things and moreover not to just learn new thing but also to enhance what i have learned till now so basically mm-hmm. this would be my you know uh, like my future map or what you can say so okay. like learning new things mm-hmm. plus also enhancing my skills with whatever uh, i have learned till now okay so let's say you join a company and then um, you are two years experienced guy and other folks are seven years eight years more than seven years or 10 years some i mean a lot of seniors are there and uh, they want to correct you 
somewhere right so how will you react you will accept that or uh, how will you accept that like how will you react that or maybe let's see they are just trying to correct you but you feel that okay no you are absolutely right in that case how will you handle this situation all right so first of all i would uh, i would consider them as my seniors and uh, they have more experience than me so whatever they guide me and uh, like uh, i need to accept it but yeah with uh, you know if i'm true uh, if i'm good at something like i'm not saying i'm good if i'm correct at something like uh, mm -hmm. there was uh, there was a debate between me and my manager like uh, the question you asked uh, right uh, like is the assertions mm -hmm. we need to place it in our test class or the page class right so mm -hmm. what i did i just you know i just showed him an api documentation and that clearly showed mm -hmm. that you should write all these things but still he wasn't convinced so uh, i you know we cannot convince them but uh, we will try you know to i will like i will try from my end to correct uh, them if uh, they are wrong at something but mm -hmm. uh, since they are the seniors we have you know uh, we have like we cannot we cannot order them we can just request them and so that's so how you will we follow the wrong process no i won't follow the wrong process i'm not saying i would follow the wrong process but uh, i will i will let them know about what is what is right and what is currently being followed as per the you know industrial standards and if they you know um, if they don't uh, like they do not agree then definitely i need mm -hmm. to follow what to say because i cannot develop a new framework based upon my you know consideration okay so let's see one last thing and then i'll be done i think um, okay so yes you're working within a team and uh, that particular team is uh, you are having some problem with some other team members that is having the equivalent experience like you like three to four years you are also having three to four years of experience assume that and uh, he is uh, taking advantage of your work so how will you handle this uh, situation or how will you tackle this how will you communicate with your other team members actually actually the condition is reverse in real life <laughs> but uh, let's not discuss about it uh, okay mm -hmm. so what i will do is i will definitely we will have a one to one conversation right because that's wrong if i'm taking advantage of his work or he's taking advantage of mine and uh, even if he's mm -hmm. not convinced by what i say then uh, definitely i need to move to my senior and i will discuss the things with him so okay for example let's see there's a dev guy a dev member is there in your team and then uh, whenever you are raising the bugs and then he's just uh, declining those bugs and he's saying that okay no won't fix and then uh, or maybe he's saying that okay no this is not a bug every time he's saying like that or let's say he's having six seven years of experience guy let's see he's a quite okay. senior to you then uh, how will you do that or you will have a one-on-one -on -one discussion or you will talk to your manager uh, first of all, uh, as a tester, I would uh, perform all my, you know, basic, uh, what I would say, mm -hmm. like basic principles. Uh, I would first, uh, you know, I will send him the screenshot. I will send him the videos or the HR file, you know, uh, HTTP archive mm -hmm. file that can be generated uh, from the Chrome browser and the application logs, uh, the API responses mm -hmm. that I'm, you know, seeing in my console window, uh, in my network mm -hmm. app, sorry. But still, if he, you know, denies, uh, that it's a bug or something then i need to you know move to my seniors and my pos so okay. that's how you know like it's a hierarchical process and so we would have to you know go through the same steps okay fine Piyush, no issues okay i think uh, Piyush, that's all from my side okay so now i think we can uh, come to the feedback point but before uh, giving the feedback what do you think about this like, where do you see that okay this interview was absolutely perfect or what do you think okay i should improve in that particular area uh, i suppose uh, uh, i suppose i knew some things but i was you know not able to explain it correctly uh, mm -hmm. maybe because lack of my communication is because of what uh, but yeah i knew some of the answers uh, to be honest uh, i was not able to you know explain it to you directly other than that i mm -hmm. i need to uh, enhance my manual testing skills uh, i suppose mm -hmm. i lag there a bit and um, mm -hmm. so i'll work upon the same okay fine Piyush, i think uh, that's good i didn't find problem with your communication skill. your communication is good but uh, please don't take it otherwise but whenever you are giving the video call right or maybe the you know some some con uh, video call like webex or go to meeting or something like this 
just be attentive you are attentive but uh, your body language doesn't reflect that you're getting a point okay, okay so right. just focus focus on the screen and then try to concentrate and then whatever try to listen first and then give the answer sometimes i'm not saying all the time your body language is something like maybe you know you're doing going in a different direction so you might lose the interest from the interview side i'm not talking about me no no that's, that's just about that just a mock yeah. interview so just don't be casual too casual okay at a time mm. just be attentive and then oh. show that okay yeah you have you are giving the time for me for the interview but definitely i'll respect your time so just be attentive for that that is mm. the first thing that i observe i think somewhere a little bit improvement should be there no doubt about it now let's start with the testing attitude you have good testing attitude no doubt about it that you said that okay uh i'd ask you that uh, uh the criteria for automation i think you have to you know prepare that particular question so with some more examples you could have asked okay those tedious tasks those tedious uh, test cases which are again and again and every regression we have to automate and it was taking a lot of time manually but there's all the repetitive test cases we have to automate that so maybe those test cases are easy and very happy part scenario use that word happy part scenario i'll be trying mm. to automate that i will not pick much complex and lengthy test cases unnecessary which is like every time mm. uh, the requirement is being changed which is impacting those areas so i will not touch that i will yeah. not try to achieve 70 80% automation at the beginning if 20 30% also is fine that is at least i'm saving 20 but 30% time for my team and rest okay. of the things we can slowly uh, you know improve and then keep designing that okay like that so that thing that will be more appropriate practical answer but you gave the right answer no doubt about it okay then you are good in your selenium skills the only thing is that we need to push we need to tell you for example let's say i ask you about yeah. uh, right. you have to create That's a list over there try yeah 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 got it so uh, earlier you have given the perfect answer for uh, json y protocol and w3c and a binary file and everything but the moment you are writing the code right the basic code that you are writing so please you know your the logic should immediately come in your mind that okay yeah because it's a very basic scenario right that is yeah. you have to create a list and then writing that and then i'm not expecting the x path the preceding sibling and following sibling the exact uh, syntax for that but you should know the approach especially in the yeah. web table in the dynamic web table that from mm. where you start i like that idea that we directly started with span text is equal to navin or piyush that was a starting point but after that maybe you were not sure that okay where should i go i should go to the left direction or the right direction preceding direction yeah, or following direction correct correct and all those things. so just uh, improve that particular question with respect to <clears throat> with respect to selenium your thing was good that uh, uh, very few people they know about the difference between quit and close with respect to session id you were absolutely right that uh, the invalid session id and the session id will be null in that in case of quit mm -hmm. and then nothing will be printed it will give you the exception okay then um, api you i think uh, you haven't worked practically on apis hmm yeah correct that's a uh, part of my personal project like part of my personal learning i i would say not uh, you know deployed so, into a officially hmm. i'm not deployed in an api project so, okay <clears throat> so i would advise you if you uh, really want to show your api hmm. uh, experience so hmm. you can say that okay fine i was doing some basic level of api automation or api testing in my current project so just prepare at least four to five basic questions all the different type of http get post put and delete calls and uh, the authentication part is very important okay you should correct. know if you are saying that there is an oauth so obviously the next question will be on what is oauth what is 1.0 what is what i answer right yeah right so definitely the the reaction will be like that only people will ask you what is 1.0 give me an example right mm. why twitter is mm. using and what you say that okay uses some different extra attributes what all those extra attributes we have secret id client id right such thing that we have to use that along with the username password and everything right mm. and then these are the very common question that monolithic and the microservices architecture you just prepare the difference actually yeah. you oh, just yeah. reverse the you just reverse the uh, concept right that uh, in what, monolithic what's the definition correct it's not about the definition you have to understand that okay why microservices is being used that is that's why i told you that let's right. say on amazon if your order history is not coming yeah. but still you right. can do the search you can do the login you can still do the shopping over there that is the right. advantage you will get with the microservices right correct so just prepare this thing and uh, bdd you were good but not that exactly correct it's not about the bdd is only about the test cases we don't say test cases we have to create the features 
right? We have to create the feature files. Now it could be a normal a dot feature file also, a normal plain English a Gherkin keywords given when then you can write it and then it's not only the PO responsibility or the QA responsibility. They sit together. It's a collaborative approach mm -hmm. and they yes. sit together and they define the feature over there. That is the main fundamental behind the BDD, right? You are absolutely correct that we have to define the behavior of the application in the form of feature file with the help of mm -hmm. given when then keywords. Then uh, TDD, I think you have to you know check it again. TDD is not about that. Okay, only for uh, TDD is test driven development approach, which is a test centering approach. It means what exactly developers they do that they first write the test cases and then they execute the test Develop. cases against okay. the, against that particular feature. It's not about only testers are using it against the feature. Obviously, first time it will be failed and then they will keep improving their uh, code. They will uh, refactor the code and again execute the test cases. Now let's see first you are getting 10 failures. Then you will be getting five failures. Then you will be getting four, three, two, one. And once mm -hmm. your test the failure count is zero, it means the feature is developed. So it's not right. about only the testing that okay, we have to automate and all those things. That is the later part. Okay, you can do that. So uh, these kind of questions are very common. BDD, TDD, ATDD. You should know about it. What is acceptance, a test a driven development criteria and all those things. And then have some basic knowledge because your resume looks really good. Your technical skills are good. People might ask you about CI CD pipelines, right? Let's see, for example, I asked you that uh, how will you set up a Docker grids, containers, and all those things. So try to learn. It's not a big deal. Set up one Docker and then uh, pass the remote URL in your uh, remote web driver. You know the architecture very well. You know the, yeah. you know, all the hierarchy and all those things. But if I ask you that, okay, what is remote web driver? where exactly you're using it, right? So how will you pass the grid URL and, and all the desired capabilities you will be passing to run your test cases on the Selenium grid containers. And I think uh, those things somewhere just try to okay, improve that. Because what happens that, okay, your uh, graph is like that. You started like this and your Selenium skills are good. No doubt about it. You solve that uh, string problem and then immutable concept also, you are aware of it. And then the way you are using your technical words when while explaining the code also, which is good actually. I liked it with one or two years experience guy. That is actually good. But sometimes mm -hmm. then like, you are setting the expectation for, for you only. The moment you say that, okay, mm -hmm. you can expect the question like, okay, tell me now about this also. So you should know some basic level of those things that, okay, yeah, now he might ask that, okay, what is remote web driver and then how to set up a dockerized grid and all those things. Right. And uh, mm -hmm. CICD will be an extra advantage. I'm pretty much sure for you. If you're adding one extra flavor that how to use Jenkins and all those things. You could have asked, okay, yeah, we were involved with the CI CD, setting up the uh, Blue Ocean pipeline and then uh, Jenkins pipeline. And then uh, the moment the build is triggered, automatically my test cases were getting triggered and all those things. Triggered. Right. Right. Overall, uh, Piyush, I think uh, it's good. Small, small things I have already told you. And one basic thing that uh, in the manager question that I asked you that, uh, how will you handle the situation? I think I think your mindset is good. You did not show that attitude that okay, no, I'm the correct guy, and then I'm the only right person. I'll discuss with 101, and then and then I'll take a consideration that okay, yeah. But don't say that okay, yeah. I'll stick to the, my uh, logic, I'll stick to the right things. If I'm correct, and I know the things, and I've already provided all the input from my side, we'll definitely keep trying to improve the things. Don't say that okay, no, we have to follow them. At a time of interview, don't say like that. Okay, okay because they are my seniors. There is no senior junior like that, but they are already working on them on the project from last two three years and you are very new to the project but again you at least try to prove that if someone is not getting the things maybe i can talk to his uh, senior maybe i can talk to my architect that okay guys mm -hmm. this is what uh, i think uh, why they are writing the test case uh, test assertion in the page library or uh, this library mm -hmm. is having a lot of hard coded value right otherwise where is your yeah. learning in that case you are also implementing the wrong thing with mm -hmm. them. yeah there is no like, way to implement the wrong you thing. can handle it Exactly, but in a very polite way. I think uh, your tone is good, no doubt about it. But please, basic thing maybe that's uh, body language. Try to just be more pro proactive, and uh, you know that is again. I think uh, uh, not a big deal, but yeah. Okay, especially right. with the video rounds, it happens when you are going for face to face. Obviously, you will be attentive. That's otherwise, I think uh, looks good to me. You have Thanks, anything I mean, to you. ask? Uh, I I would just say like you know you have seriously spotted very minute details, you know, and uh, I suppose guys like you only can you know they define 
uh, you know they can just pick out these mistakes because no one does uh, it actually and seriously thank you so much for you know providing me this opportunity and uh, you are doing very good for seriously our like testers community uh, and i've also heard that you left your job and uh, you are you know devoting your time like this is now your full time job correct learning and you know, you know yeah. teaching everyone yes so seriously that's uh, yeah. that's a very well, <laughs> what i like i'm short of words for you and uh, and i'm seriously not uh, believing i'm in front of you know <laughs> you and uh, like we had a one hour chat and uh, that's seriously amazing brother you're doing very good for us no worries, Piyush. So i think you have that caliber and uh, you are having just uh, two years less than two years experience but you know the things and uh, i can see a good caliber good automation or good technical guy in you because the way you were uh, you know explaining the things and you your concept i was really impressed with that and I'm pretty much sure that, okay, you deserve a really good company. My advice is that, okay, please try some really good company. Don't go with some any, you know, I don't want to take anyone's name, but mm, try with some yeah, good company, right. maybe good startups, a good product company where some good people are there and then try to learn from them. It's your learning age and right. just two years experience guy. And then there is a, you have a huge career. Okay. After that, yeah, yeah. you have to spend right. at least next five, 10 years in the industry uh, with your learning. And then I'm pretty much sure that, okay, you will reach some at really good level in your career. Thank you. Thank okay. you so much. Man. Thank you so much. Good man. Uh, best of luck. Thank you so much. And thanks so much actually for giving your time actually for this mock interview. And no, uh, instead I should thank you for this because you know, I was just bringing you again and again for uh, this mock interview to happen. And I'm, I seriously cannot believe right now. <laughs> I suppose, uh, you know, when I'll be watching this again and again on YouTube, then I'll get to, you know, believe it. But uh, right now I just, uh, I, I'm going to drink uh, one or two glasses of water, then I will, <laughs> you know, have a chat with Sorry for, uh, sorry for one hour for that. I think that was good. No, and, uh, that is the only purpose to give the feel, you know, to give you the feel of the- Correct. And no one the, can, uh, as actually, I already said, no one can, you know, uh, spot such minute details from a candidate. And you did, and that's, uh, that's great, man.